all the other layer types outside of it and we're going to have an introduction to masking folks okay so we're going to dive straight into it all for everyone and we're going to talk about layers themselves now layers are an important part of photoshop you will basically use them in every image every image enhancement every image composite everything that we do when we're image editing in photoshop we will use layers they make everything a little bit simpler everything nicer for us um, and basically folks realistically it's the more professional way to do things all of the photographers who are on here with us that are doing their adjustments uh, who've ever used Lightroom or Photoshop to do their normal adjustments and have not been using layers you will find that obviously this will be a better way to do it so it's quite fun but for anybody who's unsure on what layers are we're gonna jump straight in and just very quickly explain them okay so layers are pretty much at the core of image editing in Photoshop okay um, again they're exactly what they sound like we can think of layers in Photoshop as stackable em uh, elements okay each of which holds a part of your image so we can have one part that's the background we can have one part of that is a person that we might have took from a similar image and we've placed it in there um, we can have one part which is a different sky there's plenty of ways of using elements together okay they are all displayed in descending order so I suppose uh, the best way to kind of think of it folks is layers is like a stack of glass panels every glass panel has a different element on it that makes our image painted onto each other okay and you're looking down from the top the whole way through the stack of glass now Photoshop obviously is around a long time but layers were only introduced in 1994 and since then they have pretty much revolutionized photography and design okay you can have over 8,000 layers in one Photoshop document that's a lot of layers I've never had to use 8,000 folks but that's a lot of layers to be able to do anything that you want that's be as creative as you need to be with 8,000 layers okay now I'm gonna very quickly jump into Photoshop because I honestly think that layers can be an extremely complex subject so for me the best way to actually show layers is to just actually show it in Photoshop the best way to get you all thinking about it okay now I am going to create a brand new document folks okay that's what we're gonna start off with a brand new document so the you can press control N for new or you can go file and new or you can hit the new option there once you have it you if you have CC you'll get a document that looks like this a dialogue box that looks like this older versions uh, are very similar but they just don't look uh, as, as creative and as, as new as this I'm just very easily folks I'm gonna choose an a4 tab that's all I'm gonna do a4 210 by 297 millimeters and I'm gonna make it on a uh, landscape view instead of a portrait okay all of the rest of the stuff we don't need to worry about just yet but we're gonna have a a4 page we're gonna call it collage and we're just going to hit create this will open a brand new document for me which is white okay so it's a white background all we can do whatever we want with this we're gonna deal with layers so let me drag my layers panel out and we'll put it up here so it's away from your question box so you can see exactly what we're dealing with okay now I'm also gonna open up a few images folks so I'm gonna go foil and open we're gonna open up I you can see I have a load of different images that I have pre ready to go but I'm gonna open up these four images holding shift or control to select more than one at a time so we have four different images and we're gonna make a collage with these okay now depending on the version you have of Photoshop you can pretty much do every single way of transferring one image from a document to another and that is how we're going to get our layers that is that is the basically the foundation of layers it's stacking images on top of each other so we're going to start with collage one and the most basic way that I like to deal with dragging our images over is literally just to unlock the background layer so you can see that every image we open generally comes in as background layer or layer zero this is what they're going to be called we're going to just come over here and 
unlock the background i just clicked on the link if you're using older versions of photoshop you might have to double click on the link it's on the on the actual lock itself okay so what we're going to do is we're going to basically take layer here we're going to get our move tool and we're just going to see the way i can move it now because the lock is gone i'm just going to drag and i'm going to drop so again folks i just i just pick this image up with my move tool the shortcut is v i click i drag the highlight the collage image i come down here and i just release drag and drop that's all we're going to do and i'm going to put this in the corner here now <clears throat> sorry folks so as you can see we now have my background which is the, the blank white layer that's locked and i also have layer one so layer one is this image it's the first image that i've brought over and that is how we use layers this is how we're going to build our composites as we move into our selections when we can select specific parts of an image rather than moving a full image but there's different ways of doing this okay we can either unlock the background and drag with the move tool we can come to another image and if we want folks what we can do is we can go to the layer and we can right click and we'll get duplicate layer okay so if you right click on the layer you can duplicate layer and this will give us a dialogue box so what we can do is we can duplicate the layer right here and it will actually just create a layer one on top of collage 2 here okay or we can choose a brand new area from destination and this will allow us to rename it so we call this layer 2 I'm gonna put it on collage which is just this name here and I'm gonna hit OK when I come back over to collage we now have layer 1 and layer 2 now as I was trying to explain layers folks we can see that it looks like stacks of glass with different objects in them that we're looking from the sending order so the best way to kind of understand this is if we look at layer 2 now part of layer 2 is blocking layer 1 from being visible so basically this image and the pixels that it contains are on top of layer 1 so again you've got your drag and drop you can do your duplicate i'm going to just move this and look we'll put this over here maybe and we now have different images we'll go to collage tree and what we'll do with collage tree folks is we'll do a very similar option but the joys of photoshop is that pretty much everything you can do in it you can do it in like two or three different ways so instead of duplicating the layer from here we can come up to the main menu and press on layer and we can see we get the same option duplicate layer it'll give us the same dialog box where we can name layer tree we can choose where we want it to go so we want it to go to collage and we'll hit ok and when we come back over to collage we now have tree layers and the very top layer is sitting on top of layer one and layer two blocking part of the images out okay so again i can reorder these at any time so if i move layer three to the very bottom okay we can now see that layer one and layer two are blocking layers trees pixels instead so it's all about understanding how to get your layers into one up place and then also understanding you know the placement of them within your layers panel as well and how you want it to look so what we'll do is we'll move this over here I'll take layer two and I'll move it up here and I'm literally folks I have the only tool I've used from the toolbar so far is the move tool that's and that's pretty much all we need at the moment so we're going to go to our collage four and we're going to show you another way of doing it and this might be a familiar way of doing it for everybody who if you've ever used a word document or anything like that uh, if you ever wanted to copy and paste basically is what we're going to do a lot of people will be familiar with the shortcut keys but what we're going to do is I'm going to do it without the shortcut keys we're going to go select and we're going to select all which is control a okay so this will select the entire image for me once i have everything selected folks we can go to edit from our main menu and we can copy 
which is control C or command C if you're on a Mac. If you're not used to your, your Word documents or anything like that, um, folks, these are very familiar shortcuts that work in pretty much every program you'll ever use. So we're going to copy with control C and then we're going to go to our collage, okay, our original document, and we're going to go to edit and control V for paste. And there we go, it creates a new layer for us, the original layer two. So I'm gonna rename that by clicking on the layer and we'll call this layer four. Okay, and we now have four different layers in here. So let's make our image collage, folks. Let's actually go and make our image collage so you can all practice this yourselves with your own images. So the, the last thing we basically need to do is just fix our images to the way we want them. So what we'll do is we'll just take our smaller images, so layer one here, and we're going to go to edit and transform, okay? Free transform control T. This will give me a bounding box that will allow me to stretch out my images. Make sure you hold shift if you do not, if I don't hold shift, the image can be flattened. If we hold shift, it contains the properties. So we'll stretch this out to about here, folks. We'll just, we'll just bring it down to about here. And we'll hit OK. And we'll do the same with layer 4. Now, you can either press Control T, press on Edit or Free Transform. Or if you're using the Move tool, folks, we can turn on Show Transform Controls in the options. As I've said, in Photoshop, if there's one way to do it, there's generally about two or three. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this layer then and we're going to stretch it. And we're going to bring it so it is roughly at the same mark here. Okay, so about there, and we're going to hit OK. Now, so I'm happy with that, but there's a few things we need to do to clean it up. So all we have to really do, folks, is kind of think about the placement of our layers. So this image is a bit too high, and it's, we don't want it where it is. So let's move layer 3 to the very bottom. Okay, and there we go. We have our first image collage. If you want to line it up correctly, say you wanted this image to be here, it's just a matter of taking layer two and shifting it to about here. And you have a image collage. Okay. Now, so again, show transform controls, folks, or you can use the, the, the free transform. And the transform tools have been in Photoshop with every version so everybody will be able to do this <laughs> Lou coming in saying I make it look so easy this is the easy part of it Lou there's a lot more we can do which we will cover in today's lesson with our our actual uh, layers as well like if you once you get down into the more creative side of Photoshop we can actually do something that looks like this instead so you can you can be a little bit more creative with your image collages so we like you can see here my, my original image, my background layer is the table. And then we have all of these other images and the placement of the layers. So we can basically see where we place them. So we can take, say, this image. And we have that. So you can be as creative as you need to be with your image collages. They don't need to be as perfect as this. It's all about using your own imagination. That is the burn. Very well done, Shani. That is the burn. So this image here is, is the burn, the Dolom. The other images, uh, this here is in County Clare as well. And then some of them are from uh, the States. Some of them are a bit of Scotland. But there is some nice images there um, as well. So folks, obviously I would like you to kind of practice your layers by just the very basic of placing images on top of themselves. Okay? Um, and we can continue on then from that. Now, does everybody kind of understand what exactly happened there? How do you rename an image? Just double click on the layer and you'll be able to name it. Okay. Uh, John coming in with a yes. That's perfectly fine. So that's, I'm happy enough with that. Lots of yeses coming in. Makes sense for everyone. Folks, that is the, as I said, we can have eight. I've got four layers, technically five with the background. And we can have 8,000 of these. So you can be as creative as you need to be. This is an A4 document, but keep in mind that you can do bigger documents 
Uh, think about it in the, in terms of advertisement. Uh, you can have your documents blown up to the size of a billboard with as many layers on them as you want. It is a very similar system to AutoCAD and NAS. It is indeed. And for anyone else who's ever used the likes of Illustrator or InDesign, it's very similar as well. Okay, everyone seems happy enough then, folks. So just to kind of sit, sink in again um, for the people who don't have Photoshop as well at the moment, this is what it looks like. We have an image on the right-hand side, which is our finished image, and on the left-hand side, we have our layers palette. Okay, and what we do, folks, is we take something similar, like we have our background image here, okay, which is the twister image. What we see in terms of the transparent images, so right here, this part of the image has no colored pixels in it, meaning that it's transparent, but the rest of it has colored pixels in it. But we have our background layer stacked as the very first layer. We then take layer two, when we place it on top of our background. And by doing so, folks, we can see how the mountain image here, the road and mountain image, actually replaces the pixels below. The pixels are still there. We're just blocking them out with layers. So we're not deleting them. They're still there in front of us if we need to move any of the images around. And that's why layers work a lot better, because they're non-destructive. We then have our adjustment layer, so something very similar to what we've already done, folks, where we've looked at our adjustments. We now have something called an adjustment layer, which will allow us to affect all of the layers below non-destructively. We can toggle it on and off, and we will look at that in today's lesson. And, of course, folks, then we have a pixel layer, which is basically just a very blank image, okay? It's just a blank layer one without pixels in it altogether. All of our images are made up of pixels. So if I jump very back into Photoshop, folks, I can create as many layers as I want with nothing in them. So this image here is technically sitting on top of all of these, but there's actually nothing in it. So if I grab my brush tool, I can paint on top of this image, okay? But I'm not actually damaging the pixels of the images below. I can just turn that off. We're in a fresh, brand new layer. And again, folks, new layer is just the icon down the bottom of the layers panel here. We have delete, okay, which will allow me to delete any layer that I want. Delete layer two, which is this one here, yes. New layer, a folder will allow us to group a specific amount of folders, uh, la layers together. So again, this is more Again, folks, for just if you're if you're working on something that has a lot of layers in it, we can organize it ourselves. This image is our adjustments, which we will look at in a few minutes. And we have our masking, which we will look at at the end of today's lesson. And we have our effects as well, folks, which are just here, which give us a load of different options. Something that I'm not going to go into today, but we will look at it in the later lessons. Okay, now... Let's move on, folks, and jump straight into talking about the different layer types. So I've mentioned it many times, folks, but it is actually a question in the final assignment. So just to really give you that one up, that, that <laughs> make sure you are ready for it, even though we're only starting. Uh, how many layers can we have in Photoshop altogether? Quick question for everybody, get you all interacting. I've said the answer about four times, and I can already see Randeep and Shani and Matt are all coming in with 8,000. That's it. Nobody's going to get it wrong there. Collins in and losing with 8K, so they can be a little bit cooler without typing in the zeros. But yeah, everybody's getting it right there, folks. So that's absolutely perfect. Okay. So let's talk about layer types, folks, because there is different layer types in Photoshop. Majority of us, we will practice with two different types, okay? But we're going to all... Basically, we're all going to deal with our pixel layer. So I hope you all understand that the idea of the pixel from our previous lesson and the understanding that pretty much all our pictures, when we digitally uh, bring them into anything, they're, they're made up of pixels, okay? We've also kind of touched on adjustments and the adjustment layer very quickly, but we all know our adjustments, so it's just a layer form of that. We then have our text layers for anyone who's ever dealt with like Microsoft Word would understand how text works. Um, and then we have our shape layers, which are more on the graphical side of stuff. But again, folks, it's literally for creating shapes. And we have our smart objects. Now, smart objects change the way we actually deal with pixels altogether. 
Uh, they allow us to scale our images without damaging the pixels, but they stop us from editing our images with the toolbar, or at least majority of the tools. So I won't be looking at two smart objects today. Um, it's more of an advanced subject. But with that in mind, folks, what of the out, out of the four here, pixels, adjustment, text, and shape, uh, what are you more interested in? And I'll try and make sure I pay enough attention that everybody grasps one of these types here as well, folks. So quick type in if you need me to go over pixel layers again, adjustments, text, or shape. I'm going to take a very quick sip of water while everyone's texting. I can see text is coming in and adjustments is kind of leading the way there. Tracy wants to see pixel layers again. Mike's in with the adjustments. Okay. Pixel text. Nobody's nobody's interested in the shape. Uh, okay, there you go. Jordan's in with shape. Okay. But majority does seem to be keen on the adjustments, folks. And that's I understand that adjustments we've already looked at, so it'll be nice to get an understanding of how you can use them in your images. Now, don't bear with me, I am gonna go through all four, but it's just so I know I can spend a little bit of extra time on adjustments, folks. Okay. Okay, so folks. Pixels, as we know, are the heart of our image editing. It's what we're technically editing in our images. We're always dealing with pixels. So a pixel layer is basically every image you take or import into Photoshop for your enhancing, for your editing, and your healing. A blank pixel layers are transparent, meaning if we have a layer below, we can see right through. And this will help, okay, because we can have half transparent images we can have a quarter transparent image we can have any sp specific part of our image filled with pixels and the rest of it not so we can see images below okay i um, if we look at the image here folks this is a transparent pixels this is the image that is fully colored with pixels so using tools such as brush and born will alter the pixels directly unless it's on a blank layer and this is destructive okay so using destructive adjustments alters the pixels of your image directly we like to work non-destructively in, in when we can uh, folks that's the way I like to teach because it makes life an awful lot easier for you so let's just jump into Photoshop okay uh, keep in mind again folks we kind of we've looked at all of these images and we know that this image here, folks, when I'm, des when I'm actually describing our transparent images, okay? This image is transparent pixels, okay? Anywhere that's not colored is the transparency. So that way, we can see the images that are below. Just, just so that really sits in with everybody. So I'm going to close down these, folks. We don't need these anymore. We'll just close down all of these. And instead, we will open up some new images here instead. So I should have a nice image of the Cliffs of Moher. So here's the Cliffs of Moher, folks. Uh, again, in, in the Boren, in County Clare, Cliffs of Moher, national wonder to Ireland. Uh, generates a lot of tourism. If you've never been, folks, it's a wonderful place to be. I definitely recommend you check it out. Uh, there's some wildlife that grows here that doesn't grow anywhere else in the world. But this is... An image of the Cliffs of Moher. If we look at it, folks, it is literally a pixel image. It is our background at the moment, but what we're going to do is we're going to just zoom in so everyone can see the pixels. So here is our pixels. Here's some water pixels, which are our different shades of blue. Here's the browns and greens of our mountainside, and this is a pixel image, folks. It's made up of square dots of color. Okay, now, with that in mind, folks, that is hopefully everybody understands the idea of the pixel. Um, again, we can destructively edit these pixels if we want, but we're going to use layers to non-destructively do it. Okay, uh, I see a lot of, uh, sorry, Lou's coming in. I see a lot of, uh, for example, book cover artists removing backgrounds to blend images. I'm going to use non-destructive ways, Lou, exactly, yeah. We don't need to remove the background. That's masking, and that will come into the later of the lesson, okay? Well, I'm going to show you how to do masking at the end. But first, we're going to talk about our adjustment layers. So, folks, adjustment layers work the same as our destructive adjustments, okay? Except for they're not, di they're not directly applied to the pixels of our image. 
An adjustment layer is stacked on top of your pixel layer, and the effects is applied to all layers below it. So all adjustment layers have a mask attached, which we are going to look at before today's lesson is finished. And all adjustment layers have the same sliders and options as our normal destructive adjustments, except for using an adjustment layer is non-destructive. So folks, I mean, you've seen some of these adjustments already. What kind of adjustments would you like me to practice? So normally we would go to image and adjustments and these adjustments here are, are destructive adjustments. So if I add a fibrance on, okay, we can see that whatever I do to this image will directly affect the pixels below. So we don't want to do that. Instead, if I go to layer, I can create a new adjustment layer and it gives us the same options, brightness, levels, curves, vibrance, use saturation. It gives us some more in here as well that we can look at, folks. This is, the, this is one of the ways of doing it. So you go layers and new adjustment layers. If you're like me and you like to work in a fast manner and an efficient workflow, there's different ways we can do it. So you can go layers and adjustment layers. We can use the icon down here. And we can see, folks, brightness and contrast, levels, curves, vibrance, and hue and saturation. And the other ones that we haven't touched on just yet. We can also use these logo kind of icons here for each one. Brightness and contrast, levels, curves. This is our vibrance, and this is our hue and saturation. Here's our black and white from lesson one. I like to use these icons, but sometimes I like to use here. Just get into uh, whatever version you think is faster for yourself, folks. If you prefer the main menu, that's fine. Otherwise, you have the icons or you have the drop-down from the layers panel. So Stephen wants to use C to U and saturation. So we'll use the drop-down and we'll go U and saturation. Now, we can see that we have a dialog box coming from properties, which will allow us all the sliders to play with. We also have... The layer. So to see the way this is actually sitting on top of our background, this is our adjustment layer. So rather than it directly applying to this image, we can come in here, we'll change, we'll pick our cyans in here, folks. Okay, and we'll just, we'll just stretch it out to the blues a little bit. And what we'll do is we'll just change the color. Okay, so I've just added lightness on, or we can darken it, whatever you want. So, I mean, like, this is Ireland on a good day. And, and this is uh, the nice grey Ireland you'll see on most days, our stormy seas. So this is, this is technically how Ireland would normally look, okay? It's a beautiful country, but the weather is not fond of us. So again, rather than actually dealing with damaging the pixels or actually altering the pixels itself, we can just toggle this on and off. Because it's a layer, it doesn't actually destructively change our original image. Okay, so again, folks, uh, let me see. Jordan wants to see black and white. I mean, I can I can add the black and white on, but it's going to do fairly same thing. Like, uh, so if I add the black and white on from here, it will basically make our image black and white. We still get the idea that we can we can toggle in between colors. So again, I can change the blues to be darker or brighter, whatever we want. The cyan's the same. Okay, so we can change it. Again, it can be toggled on and off, and it can stack in. So this adjustment layer will actually affect this adjustment layer. So this one here will only affect the one below it, while this will affect every image, every layer that is below it as well. The original image is just here, the one in the background, Amy, which is straight underneath our adjustment. So we can toggle these on and off to come back to our original image. Here's our black and white. Here's our U and saturation, and here's both of them together. So we can literally keep adding stuff on top of here. If I wanted, I can, I can come in again, and I can add on a levels. Properties gives us the dialog box, and I can affect the black tones. I can affect the white tones. I can affect the mid tones, just like we can do with all of our images. But the choice is that we can turn off these individually. So we can kind of have something that looks like that now instead. Turn off the black and white. Come in here and just affect our mid-tones. So you can be as creative as you need to be. 
Okay, now, let's go back to our layer types. Okay, so we have layer types, folks, here. And this is our text layer. So, again, text layers are for adding wording to your images. We know that. Paragraphs, sentences, logos, whatever you want to do with it. A text layer works very similar to a Word document. That means that we can change the font that you use. We can change the size of the typeface or the font and the color of the text itself. Text layers can be made into pixels for further editing. But other than that, it's, you're very limited to what you can do with them. Um, and again, folks, I mean, I'm going to demonstrate it. We may as well. I think it, it helps an awful lot. Uh, Byron, always keep in... Byron's coming in with a good question there, folks. So you should keep in mind the uh, the order of your layers. You should always keep in mind the order of your layers, okay? Especially if you're using multiple images. Okay. Now, so I suppose what I'll do is I'll, I'll duplicate this, folks. Control-J, duplicate this this image here and I'm just going to drag it across so we've two cliffs of mohair and I'm going to drag this up here okay now because I have this layer where it is it's only affecting the background which is this image because this image is above it you can see that the, the blues are still fairly vivid this layer however is affecting both images that makes sense oh fleet so what we'll do, folks, is we'll just delete both of these. Stick with our kind of grey tone here. Uh, but instead, what we'll do is I'll actually I'll make it look a little bit nicer. So we'll come into our to our cyans. And we'll actually just bring this back. Up the saturation so we get a bit more blue in here instead. Okay, now. So what we're going to do, folks, we're going to take our text layer. Now, a text layer actually comes from our text tool. So make sure you pick your text tool from the toolbar. And all we have to do is just whatever we want. So I'm just going to type Cliffs of Mohair, okay? Cliffs of Mohair, like so. The font size is absolutely huge. So I'm actually going to highlight this and I'll change it down to about 72. And again, folks, anyone who's used to using Word, we can change the size of it. We can change the type of the writing that we have. So I've got a nice Irish one here called Ring of Carry. So again, in the options, we change the type of it. We can change the color of it. So we'll make it white. Okay. And there we have the Cliffs of Mohair. Okay. And that's, folks, I mean, it's as simple as that. It's literally just for writing text in. You change the size, you can change the alignment, you can change the color of it, you can you can do a lot with it, but it's literally just a text tool for adding text in. Okay, so back to our shapes, folks, okay? So again, we can deal with shapes in whatever way we want, but it comes as a vector technically. So it it basically will be a shape. So shapes are layers for adding shapes to your images. The shape layers are vectors and not pixels, which means they're, they kind of come with limited editing, but they're scalable, much like the smart object, which I'd mentioned. So shapes uh, can be added and subtracted to each other to make various designs, and this is where the kind of graphical edge comes into Photoshop. So I'm going to go back to Photoshop and uh, Sabrian. You can't add text directly to the background. It'll always come in as a text layer. So you can't add it directly to it. Same with our shapes. If I take my shape tool here. Uh, so again, shapes, folks, it's coming from the toolbar. Shortcut is you. We're just going to take a... We'll take a round... We'll take an ellipse tool. And what I'll do is I'll hold shift. I'll choose the color of it. We'll go for a kind of dark green. We'll put the stroke in as black. And we're just going to make a circle. Okay. And you can see that this comes in as a layer. And this icon here indicates it's a shape layer rather than a pixel layer. Now, placement does matter. So if this is above the text, we can see that it blocks the text out. So placement does matter. So what we'll do, folks, now that we have this, we'll get actually, we we'll go back to our text tool. 
and we'll edit our Cliffs of Moher here to look like this, okay? So here's the Cliffs of Moher in here instead. Uh, what we can do again, folks, I mean, you can, you can pretty much make a postcard very quickly out of this. What we'll do is we'll go back to our Shape Tools and we'll take a Rectangle Tool and I'll just add in a shape down the bottom here, okay? We'll get our Text Tool and we'll add a new layer in here. And we'll write, let me see, uh, cage. I mean, get the fathers in and all. Cade Miller Fulcher. Okay. Cade Miller Fulcher, folks. This means a hundred thousand welcomes in Irish, okay? And you, I mean, I'll, I'll actually hide this and we'll go back to our normal way of this image here. And what we'll actually do is, folks, we'll, we'll just put this up here. Move my properties out of the way so we can kind of see what we've done. And again, folks, I mean, very easily we've made a a postcard there. Add in any other sort of shapes that you want yourself. Add in more text. Do what you need to do. But this is the easiest way to kind of use your layers again and again. You can even do an image collage of different photography, uh, different photographs that you've taken while you're on holidays, making a, a postcard out of that as well. Okay. I am... Um, can I get all the text on one layer? I mean, yeah, technically you can just kind of space it out and keep adding words in if you want. But again, the idea is that we can have 8,000 layers. So I wouldn't worry about getting it all on just one layer, Deborah. Use what you have. Okay. Um, okay, folks. And I mean, again, this is kind of what I want you to do as uh, your assignment, which I'll talk about at the end of the lesson, is to make your own postcard anyway of an image or something that you've, you're, you're fond of a place that you've been to. But that's all of our layer types, folks. We have our pixel, our adjustment, okay? We have our shapes, and we have our text. Everybody happy enough with that? You can merge everything together, folks, but I would not recommend it. If we, rec if we merge everything, we can flatten our images. So select all of your layers, okay? And we can flatten our image. This will make everything one flat image and that's good for printing but what if i wasn't finished editing so let's just edit and undo step backward okay if i'm or if i'm not finished editing and i actually go and merge everything and save it out i can't undo so just be careful when flattening your images um folks okay but everyone seems okay with that folks i'm gonna move on to our intro to masking so, folks, masking is exactly what it might sound like, okay? Masking can be explained as hiding certain pixels to let the image below be seen. Masks are applied to a layer and can be used on every type of layer, whether it be text, whether it be shapes or pixels, okay? And our adjustments come with them. So, layers masks use values of grey to assign levels of transparency. So, uh, think of specific portions of our layers, I am... Um, Basically, masking generally works as white to show or black to hide. Or what I like to say is white to show, uh, sorry, uh, black to conceal, white to reveal. So that'll make more sense when we actually jump into Photoshop again, folks. So I'm going to open up an image here. I should have two images. That will help us demonstrate this quite quickly. So again, folks, I'm going to take this image. I'm going to unlock it. With my move tool, I'm going to drag her and drop on here and I'm going to transform with my either control T or show transform controls and place her where I want her to be okay so we place her and we'll place her about here okay now what we're going to do folks is we're going to add a mask on so mask is this icon on our layers panel here it's a, basically it's a rectangle with a circle in the middle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on the mask and we can now see that we get this white additional part to the layer. Okay. So it comes in white automatically unless you hold alt, which means it'll come in as black. But we're literally, folks, we're just going to use our brush tool. Make your brush a soft brush or a hard brush. Change the size of it, whatever you want to do. And make sure that your color picker is on either black or white. As I said, black is to hide, white is to show, or black is to conceal, and white is to reveal. So we're going to conceal these leaves. 
So with the mask on, with the brush and with the black, we're going to come in here and we're going to paint out these leaves. We don't want these leaves anymore. And you can see that, again, as we start to learn more in Photoshop, we'll, I'll show you how to do this so quickly and so perfectly that there won't be anything left over. But I'm, folks, literally, I'm using my brush tool as if I was painting normal black in. And I'm just coming in here and painting all these leaves out. So it looks like this image was always part of one. So we just come in here and we'll fix up the closer bits. And again, we can refine it with time, folks. Okay, you need time and patience. Something that I don't particularly have at the moment because I want to make sure we get through so many different topics. Okay, so we could, we could spend more time on this. But again, that's masking in a nutshell, folks. That's how, how we actually remove specific things from it our images without using the eraser so we can see that this image folks has not been destroyed if i change this to white i can paint my leaves back in at any time so black is the hide white is the show so black will remove any part of the image without deleting it and white will bring it in that makes sense to everybody so we, do, we don't need to cut out any of the pixels we don't need to be destructive one that i like to show off to uh, folks is a very nice technique that a lot of people i'd say would, would like to try out and i believe it's this image here okay so using masking okay what i'll do is we're basically folks we're going to take this image of this gentleman this image of the older gentleman and we're going to use masking to come up with something like this Christy, I'm not using a graphics tablet. I am using a mouse. Uh, I don't like to use a graphics tablet because I know that the students, majority of you, won't have one. Let me just delete this layer, folks. And we're going to work on our layer one copy here instead, okay? So we're going to call this mask because I'm going to add the mask on here. Again, if I add the mask on, it'll come in white unless I hold alt or option. And it'll come in black, okay? So we're just going to add a white one on. We're going to take our brush, and I'm just, whatever, folks, if I use a hard brush, okay, if I use a hard brush, you will see, okay, sorry, I need to, we can see, see those rough lines that are around there? If I use a soft brush, it's a lot easier to kind of blend our images together. So let's mask this, folks. With our black, with our brush tool selected, and make sure that these were actually on the white part of this layer now, not the image. The actual white part so what we're going to do is we're literally just going to come in here and we're going to paint on top of this and this will bring in the gentleman so again we can kind of bring the hairline across we can kind of remove some of these kind of freckles have that kind of blend come under we'll get rid of the eye as well and there we go folks i mean very easily very easily done if i keep going folks you know we can kind of do something like that okay it's up to yourselves so whatever way you want to do again white is to bring in the image okay and black is to remove it so keep those two in mind so i'm going to basically i'm going to i'm going to go back to my black here and i'm going to bring this gentleman's details back in i'm going to fix a bit of his lip here as well if we want to do half again we'll just come back in remove bits of it so we kind of we'll give them those full lips realistically folks we can see that the eyes are different so what i always recommend is to kind of make sure the eyes match so it looks like it actually is a kind of blend from a young face to an old face as if they're the same person okay but we are using two different images together uh, they are two different people but it's kind of hard enough to tell that they're two different people now okay they kind of look like they're a similar person uh can you set a de definitive halfway point well of course i mean again i mean that's going to be using your selections which we will deal with in uh our next lesson where we so folks as you've seen, we've already dealt with adjustments, and today we dealt with layers and masking, but we used adjustments in today's lesson as well. Um, 
so again i can add like a, a, what i'll do is i'll add on a photo filter adjustment on top here and we'll just change the colors to say maybe we'll have a cooling filter on top maybe not a cool filter. maybe go with a, a red okay so the images look like they blend a bit more again we've used adjustments in our next lesson we're going to deal with selections while we're dealing with selections we're also going to deal with adjustments and layers and masking again so it really will cement photoshop into you because we're not just spe specifically picking one topic up we're dealing with all the topics again and again and again redo the eyes no problem what we'll do is uh, instead on our mask here we'll come in and we will basically just take the black and we'll hide both eyes instead it's i'm literally just painting on top with the brush tool that's all we're doing Lena coming in with Harvey Dent Two Face. Very similar how you could do. You can make a Two Face um, if you if you wish, folks. As again, folks, as I said, in our next lesson, we're actually going to be dealing with selection. So it's going to get very creative. So we're actually going to take uh, an image like this of uh, a nice night sky. We're going to take an image of the Louvre, which we have, and we're going to use our selections and our masking and our adjustments together, all three together for lesson five and lesson six to basically use this image and this image to create something that is like this instead completely add in our own night sky change the tone from a daytime to a nighttime and add in a reflection at the bottom here move on folks that's perfectly fine so when it comes to any sort of image okay we had we were using our text images here when it comes to um, when it comes to actually using text, a watermark is, is literally just your text. And what we can do is we can reduce what we call opacity. So keep an eye on the Cliffs of Mohair, folks, the, the word here. If I bring the opacity down to zero, it's gone. If I bring it up to about 50%, it becomes see-through. Okay, that's opacity. It makes it transparent. And this can be done with an image as well. It doesn't need to be just uh, the text itself. But a watermark is technically just text with a bit of opacity on top of it. So we come back to our image here, folks. And what we do, again, opacity can be done on even just our images. The images become more see-through. We can do it again here. We can bring the opacity down. And the image becomes see-through okay now but in terms of text so we'll just take our text tool here folks and we'll write Shaw Academy okay what we'll do is we'll transform it okay am I on the right layer I am okay so I'm gonna move I'm gonna move it uh, folks just blow it up very quickly okay I'm gonna blow it up here we're going to reduce the opacity on it. And there's a work. So if I flatten all of these images together, okay, flatten image, there is no longer a mask and I cannot undo. This is my image. These are now the original pixels. I cannot step back because the mask is not there. The other images are not there. So again, I do not recommend flattening images. I recommend if you would generally, you always save as a... PS, uh, as a PSD, which looks like this, as a PSD, and then also save separately a flattened. Then after you save as a PSD, you can flatten it and save as a JPEG or whatever. It, it literally is just layer placements. Like with this image in here, so let's just delete this. With this image in here, like all I really did for the collage is just rotate it. So you're just using, you're using your noggin. You're basically like, scaling images up and down when they're in our layers with our control t or our transform rotating them so they're in specific places that's all it is and placing it so it doesn't take up the entire image okay benny i did not use clone stamp i used masking for the eye to make the eyes look the exact same so again like all I'm literally doing is using my brush tool, normal brush, not clone stamp, brush tool on a mask, 
black to show or white to reveal and I'm literally one click of a mouse one click of a mouse that's all I'm doing I'm just basically using the mask so what I'm doing is I'm revealing I'm showing the eyes of this gentleman and hiding the eyes below it using layers uh, it's recommended to merge layers before well, it, uh, make sure you save it as a PSD and then you can merge and save as a JPEG uh, it'll reduce the file size um, that was coming in from Joris Mar. Joris Makar. I hope I said that right. Uh, how do you organize photos for stock use? I, I mean, it's it's up to yourself, uh, Sharon. Obviously, you can use Adobe Bridge or Lightroom, and they you can kind of give all of your images um, keywords if that helps. Is there a way to do a text that is arched? There is plenty of different text options in here. You see, horizontal type, vertical type, uh, and you can text on a pat as well. Okay. So there is different ways of...